Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we'll take a look at the patch that came out for June 2020. It's called the Mayhem Patch, but 90% of the time we'll be playing it is in June, so I'm gonna call it the June Patch. It's kind of like how the 2020 car models all came out in fall 2019. It's just good marketing. Again, this patch brings a handful of balance changes and some other little fixes, so let's check them out. Jumping into the general gameplay update, the most significant is fixing an issue where players could research technologies instantly at no cost. I don't think anyone's going to disagree that patching that was a good idea. Also, the Malay Faster advancing bug is fixed, so no more 166% research while advancing. I did a quick check and it looks like it is back to where it should be. They do list a few more, but most of them just seem like small bugs that they're fixing. So now let's take a look at the balance changes. The first is that the tech supplies is being taken away from Chinese, Cumans, Huns, Khmer, Lithuanians, Mayans, Mongols, and Tatars. My first thought is that none of those are really infantry civilizations to begin with. Huns, Khmer, Mayans, and Tatars already lack champions, so in most games they probably aren't using supplies anyway. In fact, it's kind of nice to see supplies becoming a more specialized tech, though obviously those civilizations are now a bit worse against Eagles and the Goth Haskarl Flood. You could even argue it's a roundabout way of again buffing the Goths, who were already number one by win rate in the last patch, and top three in both high and low elo games. The next is a change to the Hazar attack animation. This one's pretty technical and I've never looked into it, but apparently they were always bad at chasing down units. Anytime a unit attacks, it stops moving while it does that animation, and in the case of Hazars, their animation was longer than the light cavalry. Basically, every time it paused to attack, whatever it was chasing would have a longer head start, and now that doesn't happen anymore, so you don't have to worry about it. The next change was that the Aztecs bonus decreasing their training time is going from minus 15% to minus 10%. At the moment, Aztecs are 13th out of 35 in overall win percentage, so above average, and this should very quietly bring them down just a bit. To be fair, on a unit that takes 20 seconds to normally train, now it takes them 18 seconds instead of before where it took 17. Arguably those seconds add up, but it's still a pretty subtle nerf. The next civilization getting some attention is the Burmese, whose Imperial Age unique tech now gives its full plus 6 attack for cavalry and a rambi against buildings. Up until now, if someone got masonry, then that negated half of that damage. A quick test showed that both masonry and architecture can't block that extra 6 damage now, though of course the HP is still going to be helpful. In a similar way for the Indians, their camel team bonus is no longer blocked by masonry and architecture. This is really starting to feel like an anti-masonry patch. Also, for the Indians, their elephant archer reload time was reduced from 2.5 to 2 seconds, which is a 25% attack rate boost, while their gold cost also dropped from 80 to 70. I think the attack rate change is the larger buff there. The Elephant Archer has always been an easy unit to counter with trash units in Siege, and I do like the idea of making it a bit stronger. That said, against Archers, it's actually decent, with high HP and Pierce Armor, and now they fire as quickly as Arbalest, with one more attack. It's still situational and a big investment at 100 food and 70 gold each, but 25% faster attack is a big change. And speaking of big changes, the next one isn't. Mayans have had the El Dorado research time increase from 50 to 70 seconds. I think we're getting into very specific situations where 20 seconds of research time is going to make an impact. Considering how often small tweaks like this seem to introduce new bugs, personally I'd rather see the devs not make tweaks this subtle. It's just tempting fate. But finally, the Saracens had the cost of their unique tech Zealotry reduced by 100 gold. This is the tech that gives plus 30 HP to their Camels and Mamluks. To put it in context, it still costs 750 food and 700 gold, so again, it's not a huge change, but it's enough for an extra Mameluke. So those are the balance updates, which are definitely less drastic this time than they have been in the past, which I think says good things about the current balance in the game. Moving on, there were also some updates to maps. There were various changes to islands, Kilimanjaro, and a couple of others, but nothing too dramatic. The map pool was also overhauled, adding Bog Islands, Continental, Kilimanjaro, and Mountain Pass to the 1 vs 1 map pool. I'll try to give a 5 to 10 second explanation of each of the new maps. If you haven't seen Bog Islands before, basically you start on a small island, and you're surrounded by some buildable terrain that ships can also travel on. I haven't played this one since Rise of the Rajas first came out, but I seem to remember a lot of demo ships taking out my lumberjacks. On Continental, basically every player starts on an island, which are then connected with either shallows or a narrow land bridge. Before you ask, it doesn't come with Continental Breakfast. On Kilimanjaro, you have a pretty normal starting area, but then a big sloping mountain between you and your opponent. There's lots of opportunity to make use of hill bonuses in this one. 
Now that's not to be confused with Mountain Pass, which is another one of the new maps and is basically nomad, but hillier and without access to fish. Of course, the team map pool has also had a few changes and the big new addition is Wolf Hill, which has a giant hill covered with relics and of course, wolves in the middle. But moving on from maps, there are also some cool changes to the AI. Most notably, it's now programmed to do a fast Imperial strategy, which you can encourage with the Taunt 95. It doesn't say the situations in which it will actually want to try this, but I imagine Arena would be a good candidate. Another big change is that it will now respond to tower rushes, which is pretty cool. That's always been one of its biggest weaknesses. I played around with it a bit, and basically when it sees a tower, it just throws all of its villagers into taking it down. Arguably that is still exploitable, but it's certainly much less passive. On top of that, there's all the decision making stuff that they're always tweaking, and again, I think it's great this is something that they're working on. There were of course many other small tweaks, and I'll link the patch in the description if you want to read through them. But finally, let's talk about the Mayhem event itself. Of course, as always, completing challenges will unlock some new icons and also some new graphics mods. The craziest reward though is Sheep Auto Scouting. This is something I've been practicing it for years, and now they're just handing it out for free. Now that being said, this is not going to be something on multiplayer, so you don't have to worry about that. This is for single player and campaigns only. I'm not sure exactly how helpful this is going to be since you don't really want your sheep wandering off too far, but I'm looking forward to unlocking it and at least testing it out. There are also some easter eggs which have a few clues. An elephant, a crown, a curling rock, and a clock. I looked around in the scenario editor and didn't find anything out of the ordinary, but let me know if you figure it out. So those are what I would consider the highlights of the patch. Like I said, the balance changes felt a little smaller than usual, but that's actually fine with me. It seemed like they addressed a couple of major bugs, and I'm also really looking forward to the AI improvements. That's all for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.